This is the updated 2023 mild hybrid Volvo XC40 B5 all-wheel drive. It is the ultimate trim level. Prices in Canada start at just over $42,000 for a core trim B4 all-wheel drive, while this B5 ultimate climbs up to over $55,000 and as tested, it's $58,000. That is absolutely insane because nowadays you can buy a lot of cars with that kind of money. So let's see what this thing has to offer. So it's smaller than a Kia Sportage, which to be honest, is exactly what a family little SUV should be like in 2023. So this Volvo XC40 really needs to up its game. First of all, let's talk about looks because this thing was very quirky when it first came out, but now it looks rather conservative compared to everything else in the class. It does look elegant and the badge certainly helps with curb appeal. So overall, it's very nice, but I don't think it stands out anymore. Inside, it looks and feels like a premium Swedish SUV. And to be honest, compared to the furniture from Sweden, it looks a lot better. Ergonomically, it's sound. Everything is pretty much in the infotainment screen. It has Google built in, which makes a lot of voice things very easy. So overall, it's pretty simple and easy to learn. The one thing that's striking is the absence of any driving modes, except if you go into the infotainment screen and under driving, you do have driving modes, but only one mode, off-road mode. There's no sport, no comfort, no nothing. It is kind of what you see is what you get, but thankfully, that is pretty well tuned. The instrument cluster is all digital. However, nothing is customizable except the center where you can pop up the map, but that's it. It does have a very nice sunroof, really nice front seats that heat up quickly. It has a heated steering wheel. It has pretty good driving assistance and safety features. The built-in Google also supports applications, which is pretty fun. It has LED lights and a pretty good Harman Kardon sound system. Hey Google, what's the weather like today? Right now in Pickering, it's 32 degrees with snow showers. Today, there'll be snow showers with a forecasted high of 33 and a low of 28. The best thing ever is that it has a garbage bin right here. So my wife, in theory, would throw all her garbage in there. Although in practice, I'm pretty sure she would still shove everything into the cup holders. Arrgh. Also, the door bins are crazy big and they're very nicely lined in fabric. Roominess is pretty good despite the overall small size. Once you're inside, it is very comfy and very adequate for a family of 4.1. The driving position is very nice. These seats are perfect. They're, they're like the art design seats, whatever. Um, I have no complaints except visibility and we'll talk about that in a bit. Roominess in the rear is also pretty good. You have good foot room, knee room, good headroom. Rear passengers also get heated seats, USB ports and their own vents, which is pretty cool. The kink at the tail end of the rear window does have an impact on visibility. And also my kids don't really like it because it makes the window overall smaller. It also has a roomy trunk. You get 452 liters. It has a floor that can hide a compartment underneath or you can completely remove it or do whatever you want. You get hooks and a power tailgate, all good. Under the hood now, this XC40 has an advantage over the rest because it has a mild hybrid turbocharged 2.0 liter four cylinder engine that makes 247 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque and it is mated to a pretty good eight-speed automatic transmission. And of course, in Canada, it has all-wheel drive. And I say in Canada because in Canada, you can get a B4 and a B5 and both are all-wheel drive. In the United States, all-wheel drive is optional. And in Europe, it's almost impossible to get all-wheel drive. Performance is good. The engine is strong enough to get it going with ease. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour came in 7.9 seconds. And the brakes brought the car to a complete stop in 43 meters from 100 kilometers an hour. The only complaint really is the soundtrack. It is rough and noisy, and it doesn't really sound very nice. It is pretty good on gas. On average, we're at 10 liters per 100 kilometers with a slight bias to city driving actually, but it does require premium 91 grade. So that will add some more cost, especially compared to the more affordable rivals. On the road, the ride quality, the suspension does a fantastic job dealing with potholes and whatever. Honestly, even holes the size of Content creators on OnlyFans are dealt with with ease and it's really, really nice and it's also quiet. So when you hit that bump, you don't hear anything. It's like boom, boom, and on you go. It does have a more upmarket feel, but not by much now that the mainstream brands have actually caught up. Handling is also a highlight here. The steering feels great. The brake pedal is firm and dynamically, even though you can't adjust anything, 
The car is tuned very well to deliver athletic ability while retaining comfort. Turn-in is precise, lean is minimal, grip limits are very high, and unwanted surprises are nowhere to be found. If you push too hard, understeer comes first, but you can tuck that in quite easily using the very good steering and responsive throttle. Also, let's not forget that this is a Volvo, and Volvos are really, really safe. Probably the safest cars in any class they compete in, so we can't forget about that. This is a family crossover or SUV, so you're going to be putting your family in here and souls that matter to you. So safety is up there, and for that, it definitely gets a few extra points. So to sum up, the pain points are definitely the harsh engine, the fact that you have no paddle shifters, no driving modes, and no real customization on the displays. I would have to say that it is questionable if it's actually worth its money because for the exact same amount of cash, you can get a very well-equipped BMW X1, a Mercedes GLA, an Audi Q3, a Cadillac XT4. You can even go electric and get stuff like, I don't know, an Ionic 5. So it is a lot of money and I'm not too sure that it is good value for money for this Volvo, to be honest. Overall score is 8 out of 10. If you really like the way this car looks, or if you really want, if you like the idea of owning a Volvo, then it's definitely a car that you do need to check out. It's a very good car. However, the value proposition for me is a little bit off now. In 2018, when it first came out, it had a little bit more up on the competition. It was like the most powerful one out there for the price. Now, I think everybody else has caught up. Volvo hasn't done so much to keep up with the Joneses. So let's see, up to you. That's pretty much it for the 2023 Volvo XC40 B5 all-wheel drive. If you like this video, please remember to share it with your friends, subscribe. Most importantly, till next time, be well. Bye-bye.